Okay, hi everyone. So now uh, we need to continue our lesson. There's a 5.2. There's a radioactive decay. So hopefully you got take out the notes. Then we continue our lesson. Okay, come. Let's see the first one. Okay, first one. Uh, this one topic I told you already. There's a new topic not related with the before topic. So we need to continue for the further. Uh, before that, what we learned, there's a proton, electron, and also neutron, is it? Okay, now we go and see the radioactive. Okay, first one, the radioactive, you need to say about the definition. Uh. This one is a definition. Okay, this one is a definition. So we're going to see the first one. They say the spontaneous. Okay, what means of spontaneous? Another spontaneous, the meaning is random. Okay, there's a random. Okay, sorry. Okay, there's a random integration. Integration means they want to split out. So we call it integration. You also can call it there's a decay of an unstable nucleus. Okay, unstable nucleus example, there's an isotope, unstable nucleus. Okay, accompanied by the emission of the energetic particle or photon. So that means the process for the radioactive first one must have the unstable nucleus. Okay, after the unstable nuclear, they will decay. Okay, decay is randomly. We cannot control what's the time. Okay, after decay, they will come out the new particle. Okay, this one we call new particle. Then after that, they will come out the energetic particle. Or you can say this one as a photon. So this one is a process means for radioactive. Okay, now, this one new particle, when they just decay, come out. This one will become more stable nucleus. Okay, so this one is a process. Okay, now we go and see the more detail. Okay, the process is spontaneous because not influenced by any physical factor. So any factor they also cannot make the uh, radioactive will happen, such as a time. We do know when they want to happen the uh, in the this the integration pressure big or small also not related the temperature you are high or low also not related for this one decay so that means we call it there's a, a spontaneous and also not influent okay so from here we go and see the decay occur randomly uh, this one is randomly why because every atom they got same probability to decay at any moment of the time so that means any moment of the time, they also will happen. You also cannot control. You also cannot say, oh, what's the time they will happen, this or thing. Okay? So from here, the another example for decay. Okay, let's see here. This one is an example. Can you see? First one is, a, uh, this part is uh, unstable. Okay, when they decay, they will produce a new stable particle. Another one is an energetic particle. There's a photon. Okay, now I want to introduce the photon. Actually, what means of the photon? Okay, we go back to see the screen. Okay, let's see here the photon. Got three types of the photon. We call it type of the radiation. First one is alpha. Okay, before the alpha we learn, there's a positive charge. Okay, you also can call it there's a proton. Okay, but normally from here we just call it there's a alpha. Okay, the next one is uh, second one. There's a uh, beta. Beta is a uh, negative charge. So we can call it the definition for beta is a fast moving electron. Because you say there's a negative charge, so there's a fast moving electron. We just add the word fast moving. That one is explanation. Okay, last one is the gamma. Okay, remember gamma ray? Okay, we learn about the spectrum. Okay, the last one is a gamma ray. For the cancer treatment so this one is a one of the radiation okay gamma the symbol like this okay this one called gamma then alpha like this then this one is a beta okay so we're using the symbol to represent the radiation okay let's see the diagram here just a simple thing i want to show you okay alpha beta and gamma so make sure you know how to write this symbol Okay, then we go back to the properties. 
Okay, let's see the properties of the radioactive emission. Okay, alpha, beta, gamma, we also got the characteristic. Okay, first one, alpha. Actually, alpha, how to represent? We're using the helium to represent. Proton number is 2. Nuclear number is 4. Okay, so this one is an alpha nature. When the question asks about nature characteristic, so you must mention the alpha is a helium. Okay, the next one is a beta. Beta, the nature, actually there's an electron. So from here, we put electron. Then no proton number, no neutron. So we just put negative 1 because electron got 1. Okay, last one is a gamma ray. So gamma ray, the another name we call it, there's an electromagnetic wave. Okay, same as your spectrum name, electromagnetic wave. Okay, now, now we're going to see the mass. The mass for the alpha is a large. Okay, for the gamma, gamma don't have any mass. Because wave, they don't have any mass. Then the beta show very small, there's an electron. Okay, charge. For the, pro, uh, for the alpha, there's a positive. For the beta, there's a negative. Then gamma is no charge. Okay, speed. For the alpha, slow. For the beta, fast. Why become slow? Because of the mass. Okay, the mass of the alpha is bigger compared to the electron, beta. So that's why this one slow, this one become fast. Okay, spectrum. Remember spectrum? Speed of the light, 3 times 10 power of 8. Speed of the light. Okay, then we're going to see the ionization power. What means of ionization? Ionization means when the A molecule just come, you're easier to ionize the A molecule, become positive ion and also the negative ion. So that means now they say alpha is easier to ionize the A molecule. Okay, another one, medium for the beta, not so fast to ionize the A molecule. Gamma is very weak, totally cannot ionize the A molecule. Okay, now later we will explain why the alpha become very fast to ionize the A molecule. One relationship is about the mass lah. Yeah, because the mass is too large. So that's why they're easy to ionize the power. Okay, then the last, second last, there's a penetrating power. Penetrating means go through. Okay, you can go through something. For the alpha, because there's a weak, alpha is a weak one. So you find it, there's a low. Okay, because they move slow. So from here, penetrating also become low. Beta, there's an average. Then gamma sure is a high penetrating power. That's why they can become the cancer treatment. Okay, now the last one is the range in the A. Okay, so for the alpha, just several cm, then no more already. So for the beta, there's several meter. Then for the gamma can go further, there's a several hundred meter. So this one is a characteristic. So from here, we need to go through every characteristic. So important, we start with the ionization power. Okay, let's see here. Okay, ionization power for the alpha should be the strongest. Okay, should be the strongest. So from here, this one becomes strongest. Then the particle is a um, beta, is a medium. For the gamma, it's a very weak. Okay, now we're going to see the track. Okay, this one is the track. Okay, related with your detector later. I show you the track first. This one is a track when the alpha, when they detect the alpha. Okay, can you see all is a straight line? So this one is a beta. Beta is a curved line. Okay, gamma is a, the broken line. Okay, so now we're going to see. If the A molecule, okay, A molecule just come here. Okay, H2O. H2O blood. Oxygen. Okay, example oxygen, helium. Okay, when it just come here, the alpha, when they strike about the molecule, A molecule, okay, A molecule, so they will split. They will split to positive ion and split to the negative ion. Why? Because there's a straight line. Straight line means they're easy to strike every A molecule. Okay, you see the bending one. Bending one also can be strike to the A molecule. The problem is less la because you're bending, is it? You're bending, that means maybe you bend that the anchor is a different, that means you cannot strike. So that's why the ionization is a medium. 
Okay, last one, the gamma, you see. All the line is uh, broken. When the line is broken, then the A molecule just come. You also totally very hard to strike the A molecule, become positive ion and negative ion. So that's why ionization for the gamma ray should be the weakest. Okay, so this one is the reason why ionization, the alpha becomes strong. Important is the mass become higher and the track is a straight. They cannot bend more because your mass is higher. So when the track becomes straight, that means you're easy to be hit the A molecule. When you hit the A molecule, then molecule can be separated by the positive and negative ion. Okay? So now this one is uh, ionization. So I show you the diagram for the this description about this all thing lah. Mm, this one is number three. Okay, you can see the diagram here. Okay, alpha is strong or denser. So that's why they become strong ionization power, straight trap. Okay, the alpha particle has a larger mass and the momentum is not easily to be deflected. If not easily to deflect it, means you will hit the A molecule. Okay, beta, you see the track. There's a thin, straight track. Okay, a little bit straight, lah, but bending a little bit. Very fast beta particle, fast also. So fast also, you want to hit the A molecule also hard. So they say short, thick track with the curve is randomly direction. Slowly, uh, slower than the beta particle. Okay, last one is a gamma ray. Can you see the gamma ray? The track is not clear. Or do you say continuous? So this one sure is a low ionization power. Okay, so this one is a characteristic for the ionization. Okay, then we continue with the next characteristic. Okay, there is a... Okay, this one is an explanation. Just now I told you already. Alpha. Okay, why the alpha... Uh, the track becomes straight, the easy is denser. Then the next one is a larger mass momentum. It's not easily to deflect it. Okay, the rest will be this explanation already. Let's follow the just now diagram. Okay, now we go to the second one, penetrating power. Just now I told you penetrating means go through. Okay, go through. Go through something. Okay, now we're going to check. For the alpha, okay, for the alpha, when I put a paper, the A4 paper, so the alpha actually blocking. Okay, they cannot go through the A4 paper. For the beta, beta A4 paper, they still can go through. But when you're using the aluminium block, so you find it, they stop by the aluminium block. Okay, last one is the gamma. Gamma is a high penetrating power. You see when I put the lead. Okay, when I just put here, that means the Aluminium, they still can go, but when I put the 2.5 cm lab, so that means they block already. So that means the gamma, you want to stop it, you might using the lab box. Okay, so this one is the penetrating power. So if the question asks, how about the penetrating power for alpha must be low. Okay, for the beta, that's the average. The last one become high is the gamma ray. Okay, now we're going to see this one is the explanation. Okay, stop by paper, then stop by aluminium foil. Last one is a lab. Okay, now we're going to see the example diagram. Okay, this one they show the diagram for the effect on the human. Alpha just a phase, you block already. The beta you can go in, then you see the gamma. Gamma is go through. Then one more. Okay, example. Alpha, when I put the paper, blocking. Okay, beta still can block, go through the A4 paper and the hand. Then they block by the metal. Or you can say there's an aluminium. Lah. Okay, now we're going to see the gamma. Gamma, like the wave. They can go through until to the last one. Last one is a lead box. So they will block it. So this one is the highest penetrating power. So penetrating power and ionization is the opposite. Okay, alpha is a good in ionization, but gamma is a good in penetrating power. Okay, make sure you make a differences. Eh? Okay, now we go to the following. Okay, there's a range in the A. Okay, just now told already, range in the A. 
for the alpha just a few cm then they stop the moving then the beta still can go a few meter lah. then the last one is the gamma gamma they will go through to 100 meter okay then we're going to see the electric field electric field is another characteristic do you want to test about the alpha beta gamma they got charged or not now you're going to see the first part okay first part is uh, you see here the negative top is a negative okay then the down one should be the positive okay now you see when i just on the radiative source okay alpha beta gamma is come out together gamma is nothing happened they just go straight okay they just go straight nothing to be affected so this one we call it as a gamma there's a no charge that means there's a not related with the alpha beta or gamma okay gamma just goes straight not related with the charge positive or negative also no use okay let's see the alpha alpha they will bend they go to find the negative why because the alpha is a positive charge so the beta they will bend we go to find positive why because there's an electron so they want to find the opposite charge okay now the question is can you see the anchor is a different alpha the anchor very small only the band a little bit the beta they can power just back until go to positive plate why okay this one is related with the mass okay just now we we learned already the alpha is the mass is higher compared to beta is it so if the alpha the mass become higher means they are not easy to bend so that's why the bend a small anchor small anchor then the beta is lighter so they're easy to bend so they bend with the big anchor so this one is another question they will ask why the anchor bending is different okay now we're going to see the diagram for bending number six okay you can see the example for the lead box that come out the radiative source so when the source they just go near with the positive then we know the sure is a beta lah. when they're near to the L, uh, in the port negative charge negative plate that means that one is a alpha ray so go straight one sure is a gamma because there's a not related with any charge okay then we continue with the next one okay the next one is an explanation for the alpha beta and gamma why the alpha become bending big anchor a small anchor compared to the beta so this one is another question they will ask okay let's see the alpha small different wait okay i adjust first okay let's see the beta beta they say opposite direction then after that large large deflection then how about the alpha alpha is a small deflection small deflection means because the mass is higher <coughs> excuse me okay the next one is a gamma gamma is nothing happened don't have any deflection okay then we continue with the explanation okay deflection of the beta is larger okay because the alpha mass of the beta less than the uh, the beta mass is less than the alpha mass okay the alpha mass bigger ma bigger from the beta mass so that's why the deflection angle changes okay then we go to the last one that's the magnetic field okay magnetic field sure we need to using the Fleming lah so that's why you need to know the direction of the alpha beta you need to using the Fleming okay follow this one diagram we take out our second finger uh, I'll take out our left hand first then we go and point okay magnetic field is into the paper so magnetic field you point into the paper they mean far away from you lah okay far away from you or you want to point into the paper okay it's up to you so we just point the 
cross. The cross is into the paper. Okay, when you point into the paper, means you point your first finger point far away from you. Okay, into the paper, that means far away from you. Okay, then after that, you take out your second finger. Okay, can you see your second finger? They go to the right hand side. Okay, go to the right hand side. Go to the right hand side means the current, they go to the right hand side. When the current go to the right hand side, the beta must be follow the current. So they will bend to the right hand side. Then can you see your thumb is up? Up means they move upwards bending. So from here, we cannot see upward here. We just say left and right, is it? So the alpha actually is go upwards. Upward means they're bending, go to the another opposite direction. So you can say the beta, they bend uh, downwards, then the alpha is bent upwards in opposite direction. So this one is uh, another characteristic for the alpha and also beta. Then you see the gamma. Gamma actually is nothing to be happened. So nothing to be happened means they don't have any changes. They just go straight. Okay. So another thing you also can be uh, find it by using the Fleming. If you do want to see about the alpha, you just see the beta because beta and alpha show is opposite direction. So from here, you just pour your first finger represent by the magnetic field into the paper. So you just point far away from you okay or you point to the screen so you find it your second finger is go to the right hand side okay second finger go to the right hand side means there's a current so current is a positive so beta follow the positive then beta bend to right then the alpha sure opposite with the beta is it so they bend to the left okay so this one, then you adjust the anchor. Lah. For the alpha, the anchor becomes smaller. For the beta, the anchor should be the bigger. Okay, by using the Fleming left-hand rule. Okay, now we're going to see the example diagram. Okay, this one. Change the particle in a magnetic field. Okay, so you from here, you can see that. Okay, you see the Fleming. Okay, follow the current, then go downwards. Then after that, this one is uh, up, up is a motion, then up, up is represented by the alpha. Okay, then we continue the following. Okay, we see the following. Okay, there is a detector. So from here, we learn about all the characteristics already. We need to know the detector. So detector means the thing they want to detect alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, come, let's see the how many detector we use it. Okay, let's see here the detector is. Uh, okay, now the detector we got photography batch. Okay, photography batch. Okay, this one is the first one. You can see the diagram for the photography batch is how. So we continue with the number 8. Okay, this one is an example for the photography batch. Okay, the diagram they show there's something they want to detect the darkness. Okay, different darkness, that means they can detect there's an alpha, beta, or gamma. Okay, so this one is an example for the batch. Okay, now you're going to see the explanation. Photography bledge, they, they worn by the worker. Okay, the worker need to warn it. Okay, under in the nuclear power station and in the radiation of the light. Okay, they wear it. Now, the degree of the darkness. Okay, the degree of the darkening from the photography flip. They indicate the amount of radiation received. That means more darker means the radiation is higher. Okay, number three. The photography film that can detect all the type of the radiation. That means when you wear the photography batch, so you'll find it you can detect the alpha, beta, and also gamma, depend by the degree of darkening. Okay, depend for the degree of darkening. Okay, so finish. This one is a first detector. 
Second one, we go to the second de detector. There's a gold leaf electron. Okay, let's see the diagram. Gold leaf electron. Okay, they got one of the leaf. Okay, the leaf lift up. Why? Because both also electron. So they will repel to each other. Both negative charge so they repel to each other. So you're going to see this one go leaf electron. How to detect the particle? Okay, so from here they say when the charge plate, okay, the charge plate of the electroscope is exposed to the source of radiation. So this one is a charge plate. When the plate they detect some of the charge, okay. So this due to the ion produced by the radioactive neutralize the charge in the electroscope. So that means they want to detect the charge. Means this thing must be easy ionized. Ionizing. This is my easy ionizing. Then they can detect the charge. Is it? So if I said here is a positive. So what they want? They want negative. So that means any A molecule, any particle just come here, they will detect, they will ionize the thing, then detect the charge they want. After that, all the charge will come down. Okay, let's see example. I show you the diagram. Okay, this one is an example. This one is an electroscope. Okay, now you can see this one diagram. Okay, this one diagram is more correct. Just now it's a negative and positive, is it? So I explain by using this one. Okay, can you see this one is a positive, this one is a positive? So that means hold that this is a positive charge. Okay, come. Suddenly, we got A molecule or you put something just near with the surface of the ditch. So now, they will ionize. Okay, they will ionize means which one easier to ionize? Must be the alpha. Okay, if you come beta, that means I'm not easy to ionize the A molecule. So that means when they just come out, they got alpha. That means when they just ionize the A molecule, now you got positive charge and negative charge is it. So that means now i positive at the top. i positive, I will attract all the negative ion. All negative ion just come here. Okay, so you can find it, they become neutralized. When neutralized, what happens? This gold leaf that will collapse to come down. Okay, so I explain again. If now it's a gamma, the gamma come near to the dish, anything happen, actually is nothing to happen because gamma cannot ionize. If they cannot ionize, means positive charge cannot receive any electron ion, so nothing happen. Okay, if I better to come here. Beta to come here, okay, beta still can be ionized, but small. So a little bit electron will attract to the dish. So maybe you see the gold leaf, they just collapse a little bit. Okay, so now if I say the alpha just near to the dish, so what happened? Alpha easy to ionize the A molecule, is it? Surrounded got A molecule. So the alpha will produce more positive ion and negative ion. So from here, now the ditch, they want to receive negative ion. So when they want to receive the negative ion, all will attract to the ditch. When they attract to the ditch, so after that, all the negative ion will come down, neutralize the whole thing, then the gold leaf. When they detect this one, become electron, negative charge already. Then they will collapse and come down. So from this one situation, you can see the gold leaf come down means what? The gold leaf detect the alpha particles. Okay? So conclusion, I just want to tell you, gold leaf is using the process, is a ionization process. So which particle that can be detected? The answer is alpha only. Beta and gamma, they cannot detect. So because low ionization power. Just the alpha is a good. So conclusion, go leave electroscope. They're using just detect alpha particles. Okay. So now we continue with the explanation. Okay. So they say when the charge plate is an electroscope is exposed to the source of radiative, the go leave will be collapsed slowly. This is due to the ion produced by radioactive source neutralize the charge in the electroscope. Okay, so from here they say, 
this method is suitable to detect the alpha particles. Okay, they're just suitable to detect the alpha particles. Reason? Why they're suitable for alpha particle? Because alpha particle is a good ionization power. Okay, high ionization power. So they're easy to be detected. Okay, so from here, first one, photography bleach is alpha, beta, gamma. But for the gold leaf, we just can detect the alpha only. Okay, then we continue for the third one. <coughs> There's a spark counter. Okay, let's see the diagram for the spark counter. Okay, after that, you see here, they got wire gauge. They got source of the radiative. <coughs> Excuse me. Then they got ions. Can you see the ions? Positive and negative. So that means this one spark counter also using ionization. Okay, they're using the ionization. Okay, let's write first. detect by using the ionizing power okay so continue with the explanation first one they say when the radioactive source okay this one is a radioactive source when they bring to closer to the uh, the spark counter okay near to the spark counter the spark will form the spark will form why the spark will form because the radioactive ray ionize the a molecule Okay, if you don't have any ionized with the A molecule, the spark counter cannot form one. So the spark are formed due to the collision between the ions and A molecule. So we got ions, we got A molecule, when they just collide, they produce the spark. So from here, because we say about the ion, positive and negative ion charge. So from here, alpha is a good ionization. So that means spark counter also only can be traced the alpha particle only because of high ionization power. Okay, ionizing power should be high. So from here, this one also want to detect alpha. Okay, because alpha is a good in ionizing power. Ionizing power becomes strong, so that means they can produce the ions. Okay, if the ions, then collide with the A molecule, they got spark. So that means when the beta and the gamma just come here, they cannot produce the spark because your ionization becomes very, very weak. So cannot produce a collision. So that means they just can see the spark means, okay, now they got alpha particle to come here. Okay, so this one also just can detect the alpha only. Okay, so we can see the example. Number 10. Okay, this one is a spark counter. Okay, sparking here. So the sparking here means they got uh, the ions here. Lah. They collide with the A molecule and produce the spark. Okay, then we continue with the, the third one. The third one should be the normally be using to detect the particle. They call GM tube. Or you write the word Geiger-Muller tube. So Geiger Mueller tube is a one of the detector is more uh, accurate when you want to detect something because they show you the meter, they show you the digital number actually inside of how many alpha, beta, or gamma. Okay, come let's see. We start with when the radioactive radiation enter. Okay, they want to enter to the GM tube through the mica window and ionize the argon gas that means inside they got argon gas okay when they just uh, ionize with the argon gas a pulse of the current they will produce a current after that they will count by using the red meter okay when they just ionize with the argon gas they produce a current current will go through after that the red meter will read what you send so the actual reading for the GM tube is calculated by the following formula. Okay, let's see the formula. 
So before that, you put the radiation. Actually, they got reading. This reading, we call it background reading. Okay? So that means before you detect alpha or beta or gamma, the red meter actually got reading. This one reading is a background reading. Okay. So from here, you want to know the actual alpha is how many. You must take the reading you record minus the background reading. Okay, what means of background reading? Let's see here. Background reading is produced by the radiative material from the earth and also surrounding such as the stone, sand, and etc. from the comic ray in the sunlight. This one means actually surrounding we all also got the radioactive. But this one radioactive do not harmful for your body. Like they're just a small number. So this one we call background reading. Okay, so the GM tube, they can detect alpha, beta, and also gamma. Depends the reading from the red meter. Okay, we see the example for the GM tube. Okay, this one is an example for the GM tube. Okay, they got ionization gas. With the argon, after they ionize the radiation. Okay, can you see this as a red meter? Okay, the red meter. Okay, we're going to see the details some more. Okay, this one is a how the Geiger Muller tube, how to function. So the first step. Okay, the first step, the function is, okay, the radiation go in. Uh, window for the thin mica window. Okay, number two, the argon gas. Okay, they will ionize with the A molecule. Okay, after that, free electron they will accelerate towards to the central wire anode. Okay, then number four, this one accelerate electron they will collide with the other argon atom, so cause the further ionization. So from here they produce is a, uh, I want you can say about the electron. So now number five, number five the positive charge ion are attract towards to the metal tube cathode okay number six the collision of the electron and the argon ions and the electrode produce a current pulse remember just now i told you the current pulse okay then the current pulse will go where go to the red meter so from here you can see each one current pulse further so amplifier here to red meter okay or the same on the scalar to measure the count of the rate so finally they can count about the red is how many so the background count is the reading when no source present so background you need to minus so due to the background radiation that comes from the rock from the soil from the cosmic ray so from here you want to count actual reading so you need to minus the background reading so that one is the actual reading for the radiation you want to detect so this one is a Geiger Muller tube. Normally, if the question asks what detector you want to use to detect the radiation, so your answer should be GM tube. Okay, make sure the G slash then M capital letter. Okay, so this one is the third one for the detector. Okay, then we continue with the last one. That's a clock chamber. Okay, cloud chamber, can you see the structure first? Okay, here they got mica blade. Okay, they got radiative source. They put the dry ice. Okay, after that, okay, this one fell, clothed, well, wet with the alcohol. Okay, this one got window. Okay, now we're going to see how the cloud chamber will function. Okay, first one, when the radioactive ray, they enter to the upper part, the ionization of the A will occur. So that means this part. Okay, let's see the part. Okay, this one is the first part. Radioactive source, they enter. After that, they say the upper part, they will ionization, the A will occur. So they will ionization, the positive. Positive. And also negative. They will produce a ion, ionized ion charge. So from here, number two, the ions. Okay, number two, they say the ions allow the saturated alcohol 
vapor to contents. Okay, so from here, this one, the ions that will go to the alcohol. This one is an alcohol part. The iron allow the saturated alcohol vapor. Before that, they come out is a gas. Okay, if we don't have any iron, they cannot come out a gas. Okay, now you got iron to come in. The al the alpha beta come in, so that means they will ionize, produce a positive iron and negative iron. So this one alcohol, they will come out the gas. Okay, we say vapor. Okay, after that condense. Why condense? Because we got dry ice. They condense back. They become the droplets, droplets of the droplets as the gas uh, is a what liquid lah. We cannot say water. There's a liquid. What liquid? Alcohol liquid. So from here they say ions allow the saturate alcohol vapor to condense, forming the thicky alcohol droplets. Okay, okay, very thin the alcohol droplets. And will cause formation of this misky trap. Okay, what is the misky trap? Okay, misky trap is the first one I show you the diagram. Okay, this one is alpha. This one is beta. This one we call misky trap. Okay, last one is a gamma. Gamma is a not continuous one. So this one from the Cloud chamber, you can see this diagram. So this one diagram, when they, the alcohol droplets, when they come out, the pattern like this, the track become like this, means they come out is an alpha. Okay, when the track just come out like bending, this one is a beta. When they come out is a broken one, this one is a gamma. So that by using the track, they go and detect this one is a which one particle. Okay, so they say they produce a ticky alcohol droplets and will cause the formation of the misky track. Okay, number three, the cloud chamber can be detected all the three particles, alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, we can see the more detail about this one diagram. Okay, this one is an example for the cloud chamber. Okay, can you see this part? Okay, this part is a radiative source. They produce radiation. Okay, after that, and uh, the causes about the ionization of the vapor. Okay, so from here, when it just come out, alcohol vapor condense. Okay, before that is a uh, vapor, there's a gas. Okay, after that, the condensation to form the liquid. Okay, why they can condensation? Because here all is a dry ice. Okay, cool alcohol vapor until they can saturate it. Okay, after that, they become the liquid droplets around the ionized molecule. Okay, here got light lah. Light to show the misky track is how. This one is a fell ring to soak in the alcohol to supply the wrapper. Supply the wrapper for the alcohol, this part. So finally, you just need to see is how they spread out. How the track to be spread out. So from here, we can see the example here lah. This one is an alpha. Okay, can you see the track? Oh, it's a full line. Okay, this one is a beta. So this one is a gamma. So from here, that means... Scout, uh, the cloud chamber also using the ionization but this one ionization they can detect alpha beta and also gamma okay so this one is a five of the detector i want to introduce so from here the conclusion is uh, we see the conclusion a while okay let's see the conclusion okay photographic blush uh, they can detect, uh, actually it's a alpha, beta, and gamma. I think this one, they just mistake. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Okay, go leaf. Go leaf. Beta just a little bit lah. But important, we just talking there's a alpha particles only. Okay, cloud chamber, three also can be detect. Alpha, beta, and gamma. Spark counter, can you see? Spark counter actually is a alpha. Okay, Geiger, Muller, tube is one, two, three. So from our lesson, we get we got three of the detector that can detect uh, all the radiation. First one is a photography batch. Number two is a go uh, the cloud chamber. The last one is a GM tube. But if the question asks which one is the most suitable, your answer is a GM tube. Okay. 
So which one can be detect the alpha only? The answer is a gold leaf electroscope. And the last one is a spark counter. So most of the phenomena they're using for detector is what? The answer is ionization. Because many of here also using ionization. Example for the photographic black shaft, they want to detect the darkening only. Okay, the rest also got ionized. Okay, so this one is a conclusion for the fine detector. So make sure you understand that I need to continue for the next radioactive. Okay, now we need to see the radioactive decay. Okay, radioactive decay just now we explained already, is it? There's a unstable nucleus, after decay becomes stable nucleus and come out the energetic particle. So from here, the first one, radioactive decay. Okay, there's a process of the nucleus changing to a more stable nucleus while emitting the radiation. Okay, now we see the example for this one diagram. Okay, this one AM. Uh, we don't know what name, la, they just label AM. So this one AM is an unstable nucleus. We call it parents nuclei. nuclei. Okay, after the decay, they come out one stable nuclei and P, this one we call daughter nuclei. Okay, then after that they come out the alpha particle. Okay, we do know they come out which one? Either alpha, either beta, either gamma, or you mix also can. So this one called decay. So now the nuclear before decay we call parents, uh, then after we call daughter. Okay, now you need to write the equation. Example, this one is an alpha decay. Okay, alpha decay, so important you see, uh, this one is a parents. Okay, this one remember, nuclear number, this one is a proton number. Okay, when they come out the daughter, okay, and also this one is alpha decay, I told you already. So they must come out one alpha. Okay, alpha sure is a four. And this one is a 2, is it? Okay, now your daughter, the proton, uh, the nucleon number must A minus 4. Then you plus 4. So go back to the A. So that means the equation must be the same. Huh? You see A equal A minus 4 okay, plus 4. So final also A. So can you cannot change the nucleon number. Proton number also same. You see, first one is a Z. Z equal minus 2. So your helium plus 2. Final still Z. So that means proton number before and after should be the same. Nuclear number before after also must be same. Okay? So this one is a one of the thing. Another one, your equation, don't forget energy. You must write the word of energy. So from here, just explain for you. The total nuclei has two proton less and two neutron less than the parents. Okay, the proton number Z decreased by two, and also the nuclear number also decreased by four. One is two, one is four, because of a neutron. Okay, now, this one is an example for the decay. Okay, equation. Let's see the equation. Okay, first one, uranium. Okay, 238 nuclear number, 92 proton number. So this one is an alpha decay. When they just come out, they become thorium. Okay, we do know that like, the question will tell you they come out what? We just need to know it's a nuclear number and proton number. Then you need to know there's a what decay. Okay, this one is an alpha decay. Sure, we understood there's a helium 42. Okay, this one single digit. One, al one alpha to come out. Later, we learn more alpha to come out. So this one just one alpha. So I know this one is a 4. This one is a 2. So the thorium nuclear number is how many? Nuclear number must be? 2, 3, 8, minus 4, then become 2, 3, 4. So that means if I write the equation, 2, 3, 8, equal what? Uh, that's an x, okay, minus 4. Okay, so from uh, plus 4, sorry. So here, x should be how many? 2, 3, 4. So become plus 4, 2, 3, 8. So the proton number also same, 92, equal uh, y. We do know how many, yeah? Then plus 2. Uh, this one must be 90. Lah. Okay. So this one is how we write the proton number and nuclear number. So we got three equation. Okay. Everyone you also can be write as an equation. Then behind you must put energy. 
Okay, so from here, I suggest you using the first one. If you're using the first one, you are more easier to see the proton number and also the nuclear number. Okay, so this one is an alpha decay. Okay, next, we're going to see the beta decay. It's the same thing. Okay, beta just we want to know behind is an electron. The electron here is a negative one. So this one negative one, this one must be z plus one. Plus one, minus one, then no more becomes z. So from here, neutron number is nothing happened. Neutron number should be the same because they're not related, just a proton number. So from here, when I write the equation, for example, for the carbon, carbon 14, 6, then it's one electron, is it? So that means 14, 14, nothing happened. You just write 14. Let's see the proton number. 6 equal, okay, this one is y. Now it's minus 1. What should be minus 1 becomes 6? That should be 7. So this one is the equation for the beta decay. So suggest to write is the first equation. Then more easier to see. Gamma decay is nothing about that. Okay, that's not changes about the atomic number. Proton number, no changes. Neutron number, also no changes. Just the effect on the mass. Maybe after decay, the mass become less. So you see, there's a nothing happen about this. Okay, so this one is an example for the decay for the radiative alpha, beta, and gamma decay. So from here, we need to do the simple question first. <coughs> okay, let's see the one of the conclusion I'm to show you. Okay, let's see the conclusion here. Okay, this one, the first one is the alpha decay. Okay, can you see the alpha decay? So this one is a 4, 2, so A minus 4, Z minus 2. Okay, the rest also same. Okay, this one is an example. First one, you see the PO. PO is 210. Because here got 1 helium, then this one must be 206. 206 plus 4 become 210. 84. So this one, 82 plus 2 become 84. So normally, the question will tell you what decay. Then they ask you to fill in the nucleon and also the proton. So this one is another example for beta decay. Okay, beta decay, remember this one is a negative one. So this number must be bigger one number. 92 minus 1 becomes 91. So this one is a no changes. Okay, if you've got alpha, okay lah, there will be minus. Then nothing about that, 27, 60 is the same thing. Okay, so this one is an example for alpha, beta and decay. So let's retry the first example from your notes. from your notes the first example question okay we just fill in the blank for the neutral number okay first one balance from the equation so we fill in this one first lah helium we know it is there's a 2 so from here 82 plus 2 84 okay equal so this one should be 2 1 0 2 1 0 plus 4 2 1 4 okay now we're going to see the second one this one, electron we fill in first, negative 1. If this one negative 1, this one 84, 84 minus 1 becomes 83, okay. Then the BI how? Bismuth becomes 214 because nothing happened about the neutron number. Okay, so this one beta, beta we just fill in 0, 0. Okay, so this one is an example 1. Okay, let's see the another example 1 I show you here. Now we go to the question 16. Okay, let's see the example here. They just want you to write the equation about the alpha particle decay. Okay, state the nuclear uh, nuclear number and the proton number of the thorium. The isotope form, write the equation for this decay. So we just write the equation, uh, uranium 23892, is it? Then after that, they say alpha particle decay. So that means final must become the alpha particle. So from here, I just write here. Okay, 
Okay, I just write the answer here. Wait. Okay, I show the answer here. So you just copy the answer. Just now the question they want you to change about. Okay, wait. Okay, there's a uh, uranium. 238 after that 92 then they tell you they want become the uh, thorium okay become the thorium okay pH okay but the thorium of uh, the neutral number proton number we don't know lah they just say they come out is a alpha particle so we know there's a 4 2 so understood the thorium should be how many here 2 3 then this one become 90. So understand? This one is the equation how we write. So the last part you just add uh, energy. Okay. So this one is just now I tell you the question. Okay. Then we go to the following example 2. Okay. Let's see the example 2. How many alpha particle and beta particle are emit when thorium decay until the PB? PB is a lead. Okay, so we write the equation first. They want TH two two three two ninety. Straight forward they want become the PB two zero eight eighty two. Okay? This one is the question what they want. So from here, actually inside got so many alpha beta gamma. Okay, we cannot see. Normally here, you see the number is a big changes. So now, we just write the equation first. Okay, behind, maybe, because they say uh, how many alpha and how many beta. So gamma no need to count. So we just write here first. Helium, 4, 2 is it. Okay, but I don't know how many, I put X. Okay, and also gamma. Gamma, I don't know, I put Y. Gamma is negative zero. Okay, like this. Okay? So, I do know the number X and number Y. So, from here, I do the neutral number first. 2, 3, 2. Equal to the 2, 0, 8. Okay? Plus. How many X? Don't know. 4 X. We put 4 X first. Okay, then the electron is nothing. So, we find about X is how many? So, from here, I find it 4 X equal. 24. So from here, I know the x become 6. So from here, I know they got 6 alpha. Okay, we got 6 alpha here. Okay, now we need to find is uh, beta. Okay, beta, then we take the proton number. Lah. Okay, proton number is 90 equal 82. Okay, just now you know the Okay, we put x first. We don't know how many. Put 2x plus negative y. Okay. So, this one is what the equation. Okay, now we continue. 92 minus 82. 90 minus, minus 82. They become 8. Equal. Okay, x is how many? 6 is 8. So, we put 12. Okay. Minus y. Okay, we got 1y only. So, 8, then minus 12, they become 4, negative 4, equal negative y, is it? So, from here, negative, we just cancel, lah. then y equal 4. So, from here, finally, we know the answer is, we got 4 beta. Okay, understand? So, this one question, they ask you how many alpha, how many beta? So, your answer is 6 alpha. Beta. So this one is the equation we calculate the whole uh, particle decay, they're not just one of the alpha and beta. This one is a continuous. So this one we call it series decay. Can you see here? Okay, I want to introduce a new one. There's a radioactive decay series. What means of decay series means they decay several times. So many times they go to decay. Why? Because the first time they decay, there's a not stable. 
although you do the decay first round is not stable so you continue to decay for the second round okay so then they continue there's a daughter and also granddaughter also come out lah. so this all we call it series decay so let's see the example for the series decay there's a here okay example three okay let's see the example three this one goes so many times okay you see the first one uranium okay uranium they go to decay okay so many times they go to decay until final become stable okay you see how many alpha how many beta they come out so this part we call it series decay so we can try the example three okay let's see the example three okay from this one question we need to write out the the format just like this one this one format so i write first okay you must see very clear uh, this question the x axis and y axis okay you see the x axis uh, y axis that's a neutron number neutron uh, not nucleon okay you want to know the nucleon that means you need to take the 130 plus the proton number okay so i write the equation for po first PO is how many? 130 plus 84. That becomes 214. Okay, nuclear number becomes 214. Okay, proton number you just read, that's a 84. Okay, this one is a PO. So now they go to PB. Okay, we also write PB the proton number plus neutron number 128 plus 82 so becomes 210 okay then the proton number become 82 okay next then it come down PO again so PO now the proton number 84 okay the nuclear number is 210 then last one we go to the pb pb the proton number is 82 the neutron number is 206 okay now from this one series decay we need to find out how many alpha how many beta so we one by one okay let's see the first one 214 become 210 this one less two this one less four sure this one is a alpha okay then the next one okay 210 and 210 nothing happened but 82 and 84 the left how many two so this one actually got how many two beta and the last one po to pb 210 206 minus 4 this one's minus 2 so here is a alpha so from here conclusion this question what they want Name the particle or radiation are emitted for part 1, part 2, and part 3. So from here, I can say part 1, we got 1 alpha. Part 2, you got 2 beta. Then the part 3, you got 1 alpha. So this one is the final answer. Okay, you need to write in the long sequence first. Of the long one, then you can find it. Every part is what they be decay. Then you need to make sure this one is a neutron number. Sometimes the question will give you is a nucleon number. There will be a nucleon number that's more easier. You don't need to plus again. Okay? So just like the example question. Okay, example question like this. Uh, this one is a one of the question. Okay? You can do, uh, from here you can see here, RN222218. So actually they minus how many? Minus 4 is it? This one minus 2 is it? So this one is a 1 alpha. Okay, continue. PB, this one also 1 alpha. Okay, now here, 2, 1, 4, no changes. Here, plus 1. So this one is a 1 beta. This one also 1 beta. Then this one is a 1 alpha. So total, 3 alpha, 2 beta. This one is an example question. You can do it. You can try by yourself. Okay. Then we continue to the okay the last part for this topic. Okay.
Okay, there is a half life. Okay, the last part lah. Let's see the half life. Half life, what's the meaning? Half life that is a radioactive material. It's a time taken for the activity. Okay, remember it's a time taken ah. I mean, you want to count it's a time taken for the activity radioactive to four half of the original activity. So that means when the original is thousand. When you four become half is how many? Five hundred is it? So they want to know this one time is how long. Okay, so this one time we call it as a half life. Okay, half life is a constant. We will find this one is three hour. That means when I continue become half. Okay, become half is how many? Two. Uh, wait. That become half. This one is a two five oh is it? Okay, two five also taken three hours. Okay, when you find the half life is a one number constant. So the continuous should be the same. So they say half life is a time taken, okay, to let the original activity become half. So now we see this one graph. Okay, can you see when starting is a two five six? Okay, when starting is a two five six. Okay, two five six become half is a one two eight. So time taken how long? Three hours. So I can say the half life is a three hours. Okay, so let's see the example diagram for the half life. Okay, so this one is a definition. The time taken for the number of the undecayed nuclei in the sample to be reduced to half of its original number. So that means important is the time taken. Lah. So example 256, they drop become 128, they take 3 hours. So 3 hours become the half life. So the half life we label by T, after that put half. So half life. Okay, then we continue for the example question. Okay, to calculate the half life. Okay, let's see the first one. The half life of the radioactive material, forty gram, is two hours. So we write first. Half life is two hours. Okay, determine the mass of the radioactive material that has decay, has decay, suda decay and not yet decay after six hours okay so from here we can see the graph two five six is starting okay after decay left one two eight this one is left okay how many already decay one two eight decay already so left how many another one two eight so i continue to decay so okay this one is more harder to calculate we're using the easier one okay 10, decay become 5. Decay again become 2.5, is it? So here, 2.5 is uh, the not yet decay. 2.5 is not yet decay. Okay, how many decay? 7.5 already decay. Okay, so understand, huh? So from here, this question, they want to find out 2. Decay is how many? Not yet decay is how many? For 6 hours. Okay, 6 hours. So from here, we need to find out 6 hours. Actually, inside got how many half line? So 1 half line is 2 hours, is it? 6 divided by 2. Divided by 2. So that means inside got 3 times. 3 times become the half line. So how to say 3 times? So we need to divide by 3 times. Ah. 40 gram. Divide by 2 becomes 20 gram. Okay, this one we call 1 half line. Okay, continue for 10 gram. Second half line. We need the 3, is it? So become 5 gram. So this one is a third half line. So 3 already, la, 3 times. We do the 3 times already, become 6 hours. So you left how many? Not yet decay is a 5 gram. How many decay? 35 already decay. Okay, this one is not. Okay, so this one is the answer. For example, four. Okay, then we continue for number five. Number five, the half life for the sodium is twenty-four, uh, sixteen hours. So we write here, sixteen. Okay, what's the time taken for the sodium? 
to string from 0 0.64 to 0 0.04 okay so we need to try again and starting 0 0.64 want to make it until 0 0.04 so we do one by one every time is divided by two okay 0 0.64 divided by two 0 0.32 then continue 0 0.16 then continue 0 0.08 then continue 0 0.04 okay then we stop enough already so here go how many half line one two three four four half line is it four half line means the time taken is uh, 16 multiply with four so we take how long 64 hour to finish until 0 0.04 gram left okay now we go to example six the half line is a uh, 12 second let me just write the info half line is a uh, 12 second okay how long will take for the activity barium 143 sample to reduce to 1 over 6 from the ori ori should be 16 over 16 uh. so you want to become 1 over 16 so this one is a 1 over 1 1 over 1 divided by 2 1 over 2 lah. Then continue there by 2 1 over 4 then continue 1 over 8 then continue 1 over 16 okay here you got 1 2 3 4 4 half line okay 4 half line means 4 multiply with the 12 second so your answer is 48 second okay example 6 then we go to the last one that's example 7 okay let's see this one diagram they never show anything just show in the graph okay let's see the graph okay graph that show the starting is a 120 oh. starting is a 120 oh. okay drop become half is a 16 is it so when starting 120 oh, is a 20 so that means when 120 oh, the time taken is 20 minute then 60 is become 70 minute so from here they want to determine the half line so they want to determine the half line means you need to count when 1 to 0 to become 60 the time is how long so the time is 70 minus 20 is it so the answer is 50 minutes so that one is your answer as so a 50 minute is a half line so you cannot say oh the time taken is 20 20 is wrong eh? Because they start with 20, they never start from 0. Okay, so this one is the answer. So that means uh, our lesson is finished. So from here, you can refer your tutorial. Lah. You can refer your tutorial. Then the following, I will show you the tutorial answer. Then hopefully you can answer all the questions here. If you, the example question, lah, then the notes, you also make sure you understand. If not, <coughs> excuse me you can pm me which part you are not understand so i will recall back lah. i will explain for you which part is you not understand and the next one <coughs> excuse me then the next one i will show you the the answer for the tutorial for the coming soon video clip then hopefully you can finish then you can check the answer that I show you so everyone thank you for your watching so stay at home ah. so the coming soon the school will open so I will see you again okay thank you <coughs> then I record